Here is a fantastic question related to the concept of dimension. And we will learn so much from this short discussion. The question is, are these vectors from R3 linearly dependent? Now let's begin by acknowledging one thing, that we couldn't possibly answer this question in the affirmative simply by guessing a non-trivial linear combination of these vectors that equals zero, or alternatively, by expressing one of these vectors as a linear combination of the other two. Why not? Well, because the numbers are too complicated. But we do notice that the last entry of every vector is the sum of the first two. That's the key insight. But does it help us conclude that these vectors are linearly dependent? And the answer is, yes, it does. And here's the logical chain that will take us to that conclusion. And along the way, it will illustrate the power of linear algebra reasoning. It goes like this. The fact that the last entry is the sum of the first two is characteristic of a linear subspace. In other words, it's a linear property. These three vectors belong to the subspace characterized by the property that the last entry is the sum of the first two. And importantly, this subspace is smaller than R3. It is its proper subspace. Proper meaning that it's part of it, but it is smaller. There are vectors in R3 that are not part of this subspace. As a matter of fact, any vector whose last entry is not the sum of the first two, for example, one, two, four, is not part of the subspace. And because this subspace is smaller than R3, its dimension must be less than three. Now that's actually a theorem in linear algebra that we would have to prove, that if some subspace is smaller than another, is part of it, but is smaller, then its dimension is less than the dimension of the larger space. But instead, we'll just use our geometric intuition. Think of geometric spaces that we know. What is the largest space smaller than the entire space? And that, of course, is the plane. There's nothing in between a plane and the entire space. And what's the dimension of the plane? It's two, it's less than three. And the next smaller subspace is a straight line, part of a plane, but of course its dimension is smaller, it's one compared to two. So if we have two subspaces, and one is part of another, but it is smaller, we have to conclude that its dimension is less than the dimension of the larger space. So these vectors all belong to a subspace that's at most two-dimensional. It is actually exactly two-dimensional, but that besides the, that's besides the point. The important part is that it is most two-dimensional. And what we now have then is three vectors in a two-dimensional space. And by the argument that we've explored thoroughly so far, these vectors are necessarily linearly dependent. So we have arrived at our conclusion. And I once again want to point out the wonderful thing that's happened. We can't possibly guess how to express one of these vectors as a linear combination of the other two. Later on, when we introduce Gaussian elimination, we'll actually consider this very problem and rather easily, to be honest, we'll arrive at the conclusion that if you call these vectors A, B, and C, that A equals, let's see, minus 195 eighth of B plus 199 eighth of C. This will be the answer, and I think this should convince you that we could not have possibly guessed what the linear combination is. But we didn't have to. We completely circumvented a specific calculation. We simply used logic and simple counting. All we needed to know from the point of view of numbers is that two is less than three. So we combined a great insight into what we have with linear algebra reasoning to arrive at a qualitative conclusion that these vectors are linearly dependent. 
And this, in a nutshell, illustrates the beauty, the power, and the robustness of linear algebra.